Tri-State Worship Center, our aim isn't to be the best church in the community, but to be the best church for the community. We're here to encourage the saints, help the hurting, and embrace all people. At Tri-State Worship Center, there's a ministry for everyone. So if you're looking for a place to grow and serve others, or just need some additional encouragement, we've got you covered. casual and very friendly. You'll barely make it through the door without being greeted with a smile and a handshake or even a hug. dress code. We don't have one. The important thing is that you come. So come in what you have and we'll go from there. It's our vision to be a beacon, a light, a celebration of hope, a hope that we can only find in Jesus. We only ask one thing. You've tried it your way. Why not give his way a try? We'll see you at church. Hey, good morning. good morning. Happy New Year. Look at your neighbor and say, Happy New Year. How come you said it to each other louder than you said it to me? Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Thank you so much. Welcome to Tri State Worship Center. Glad to have you with us this morning. My name is Pastor Terry. This is my lovely wife, Vicki. Uh, we just look forward to what the Lord has in store for us. We're just really glad you're with us, aren't we, honey? We are. If you are a first time guest with us, you should have received a card. Looks like uh, up on the screens. I did it. <laughs> you didn't Sorry, want to, though. Joke. You went. It's I didn't up want on to the. That way and that way. <laughs> Sorry. Inside joke. Um, if you will text the word "welcome" to the number on your screens, and then also if you're a regular tender, text the word "here" to the numbers on the screens, and uh, we will um, just want to just make sure all is well with you. Just kind of keep not keep track of you. That sounds terrible. Just make sure um, all is well, and um, if you'll do that, we'd really appreciate it. Also, if you're a first-time guest, if you will text the word welcome, we also have a gift card for you, and we just appreciate you being with us. And hey, Facebook, welcome. Say hi. Send us a wave. Or a thumbs up, or what, you know, one of those things that you do. Or hearts, or whatever. We're not going to stop the service here in a little bit to take up an offering. We don't receive it that way here. We just ask you to put your tithe, your offering, building fund commitments, your missions giving into these boxes that are on the wall located throughout the building. You can text to give at 740-370-4342. If you're watching us by Facebook, you can hit Shop Now to take you right to our giving page. Uh, there's a kiosk for those of you that are here out in the foyer. Uh, or you can go to TSWC.org and you can give there. Regardless of how you do it, we need you to do it so that we can keep doing what we do. And we appreciate that so much, what you do. So this week we're resuming all activities. That's going to be Bible study. Men's uh, Bible study is next Sunday night, not tonight. Um, 
Thursday night is the Bible study for women is uh, Glow and Royal Rangers. So we're back in the swing of things. So everybody mark your calendars. Also, if you're interested in your 2021 giving records, please contact the church, church office. We were making fun in this first service that Jake's not here. So we just want you to just to just to message Jake with everything. Just call Jake. Just, Terry said call her just to redo do it today. the almanac. Do it. Let's put her number up on the screen, everybody. Um, just do it today, yeah. And, and then, like, maybe ask her to read you a book or something. But if you want your giving, we're just saying call her about that. She doesn't even know we're telling you that. So she's, she's going to act like she doesn't know what you're talking about. But just don't, don't take that. But, yeah, no uh, men's meeting tonight. But we are having a men's retreat January 21st through the 23rd, end of of this month at the uh, Scioto Christian Campground in Wheelersburg. There's a sign-up sheet out on the uh, Welcome Center desk. So if you can go, it's about 89 bucks a guy. It's going to be a great weekend. All your food and lodging is included in that $89. Um, And I would encourage you to sign up and go. If if money's an issue, let me know regarding the retreat. and we've got some guys that would uh, like to make sure everybody goes and that money's not an issue. So uh, we can uh, get you a, a, a grant for some funds. Let's stand. We've been putting our prayer list up on the screens. We're going to leave it up there for, leave the names on there for about a month. But if you want to take a picture of that, please feel free to do so. Um, Cassie Lawhorn just texted me in between services. She was on her way to go out the door to come to church, and she's been struggling with some vertigo, and uh, she said she just about got sick uh, once she made it to the kitchen. I said, clean that kitchen up, and that probably wouldn't happen. No, I, I didn't. So let's remember Cassie. She's not up there. Cassie Perry's up there, but Cassie Lawhorn is not, so let's remember her. You have a special need this morning? Let me see your hand real quick. Anybody in this house believe God's able? Amen. Lord, thank you for today. Thank you for being an awesome, awesome God. A God that loves us and cares about us. A God that's intensely involved in our lives. And for that, we are so, so thankful. I pray this morning that you will just supply every need. Those that are on our prayer list, those that are represented by an uplifted hand. Regardless of what the need is, spiritual, physical, financial, emotional, we know that you're the God that can do all things. And so we just pray you'll touch those needs. And let us hear some reports of victory. I pray this morning you'll bless those who give in the offering. Multiply that offering for the upbuilding of your kingdom. God, in everything that we do today, let us point somebody to Jesus Christ. We love you. We praise you. We bless you. For it is in Christ's name that we pray. Someone say amen. Amen. Wow. Thank you, praise team. Thank you for uh, leading us to the throne. Also appreciate our children. They've already taken off. To go to uh, their lesson this morning. I always appreciate them being in, in church with us and worshiping with us. And, uh, you know, some people drive a long way to come to Tri State Worship Center because it's such a great church. Amen. You, can't let, you can't let me say something like that and then, like, uh, it's good to see the Franklins all the way from South Carolina. I, I saw on your uh, Facebook page that uh, the Oaks was going virtual today, and I, and I thought, has the COVID hit them that bad? <laughs> and then I walk out here, it's like, now I know why. You're just pumping our service into your... No, I'm just kidding. It is good to have you guys with us. Jackie, it's always good to see you. I appreciate you being here this morning. Don't forget, if you're a first-time guest, if you'd text the word welcome to that, that number, 7402-448-694. Also, if you're a regular attender, text the word here here to that same number. This helps us keep track of everybody, lets us know who's here and who's not. We appreciate everybody that attends. So let me also remind you there's not a men's meeting tonight. We will resume next Sunday night, as is our custom uh, on holiday weekends. We uh, kind of take that Sunday night off and let you spend some time with your family, with your friends. I did have a couple guys say, please, please have a Bible study. Sunday. But I said, no, we're not doing it. Um, Every year about this time, people are trying to set some goals. We've come to know them as resolutions. You know what I'm talking about? There was a recent news story on a news channel, though, that had several people on there that said that they are not doing that anymore. They're not going to set resolutions. They're not going to set goals for the new year. And the reason that they gave was that they never seemed to work out. They never seem to work out. I wonder why that is. 
I wonder why it is that we can set goals and set resolutions and then we give up on them because they never seem to work out. I think the problem in our world and especially in the church is not that we set our goals too high and we can't attain them. I think we set them too low and we just walk over them. I think there's times when we need to be challenged and we need to to have some conviction. We need to change. But change is hard, isn't it? Change is difficult. For them to change my office, for those of you that were in my office before they cleaned it up, for them to change my office, they had to kick me out of my office. (laughs) Once I was allowed back in my office, I couldn't find anything. Someone said, where's the keys to the bus? And I, I don't know. I don't know where they're at. They've moved them. They put them somewhere else. Change is difficult. Change is hard. But can I tell you something? The only way that we will make an impact in the kingdom in 2022 is to change. We have to grow. We have to move. We have to keep going. So what I want to do is try to eliminate some of the clutter. And I'm going to give you this morning a very simple New Year's resolution. It's so simple, it will just eliminate everything else. It'll eliminate all the clutter. And here's the thing. I'm going to give you three steps to accomplish this resolution. And here's the guarantee. You you won't hear this at every church. But I will double your money back, guaranteed, if you paid any money to get in here. I will double your money back, guaranteed, that if you'll do the three things, the three steps to get you to this one simple resolution, it will change your life, and it'll make 2022 the best year of your life. I promise you that, if you'll do it. Now listen, if you're just going to hear me and say, well, that was nice, Pastor Terry came up with a New Year's sermon, and it sounded good, and you don't do anything with it, if you're a hearer only... It won't make a difference, we'll w- except, for with, except for with that guy. We'll wake you up at the end of the service and let you go home. Lord, thank you this morning for just allowing us this time together. Thank you for, uh, for our worship team that led us to the throne where we bowed down and worshiped you in spirit and in truth. And I pray that was a sweet sound in your ear, but I also pray that it prepared our hearts to hear from you. God, not just words that are on an iPad or something that's in my head, but we need to hear from you to make 2022 the year of impact in the kingdom for Tri-State Worship Center. So help us this morning as we go through this together. We love you. We praise you. We thank you for that. It's in Christ's name that we pray. Someone say amen. Amen. There was a uh, gentleman who went to a retirement community to spend the rest of his life there. He was elderly, thought he needed some help. Wasn't long until he made a lot of friends. Um, but there was this one lady that was just especially, especially attracted to, and so he spent a lot of time with her. And so they, uh, finally one evening he was sitting with her at dinner and he proposed to her asking her to marry him. The next morning he woke up remembering his proposal, but he really couldn't remember the answer. So he went to her that morning and said, I, I'm, I'm really embarrassed. I, I proposed to you last night. But I can't remember whether you said yes or no. And the lady said, oh, thank goodness. I remember saying yes, but I couldn't remember who asked me. (laughs) Sometimes I feel that way about New Year's resolutions. Right? We make them, and then we can't remember them. I I tell myself, this year is going to be the year that I'm going to get back down to high school weight. Why, I don't understand why you laugh. I've only gained less than a pound and a half a year since I graduated high school. That's not bad. <laughs> How many? It was 43. 43 years ago. Do the math, friend. And I tell myself I'm going to exercise. I'm going to lose weight. I'm going to get in good shape. I'm, I'm going to do all the kinds of things that I need to do to improve myself. I'm going to pray more. I'm going to read more Bible. I'm going to watch my diet, but then somehow, some way, I forget that. And I know that I'm not alone because I think you've got that problem too. I think we have these goals. I think we have these resolutions and then we forget what they were not long after the first of the year. I just about adopted what I saw on social media this week where it said this year, I want to be more like Jesus, hang out with sinners, upset religious people. Tell stories that make people think, choose unpopular friends, be kind, loving, and merciful, and take naps on boats. Amen? 
Let's be more like Jesus. But the truth of the matter is that this year, as God's people, as his church, we, we need to make some changes. We need some resolutions, and we need to make those change, changes for the better. So here's my simple New Year's resolution. Here's the resolution. Let's promise ourselves and let's promise God that we will make a change for the better. Let's just make that promise. I'm going to give you three steps to do it, but the promise is, Lord, I'm going to make a change for the better. I'm going to change myself for the better. I'm going to do the things that I need to do, especially the three things that Pastor Terry's about to tell me so that I can make a change for the better. Here's the first thing. Develop a positive outlook toward life. I'm telling you, it's amazing to me the number of believers that have the promise of heaven, yet they don't live their life that way. Some people die at 26 and they're not buried till they're 80. They do not live their life with the abundance that Jesus came that we might have. We need a positive outlook toward life. A few years ago, a lady committed suicide and here was her note that she left. I decided that unless life was worth living, I would just quit living. If life's not worth living, I would just quit living. And can I say to you this morning... That's probably not a bad idea, but the better idea is to make life worth living, to change things for the better. I think one of the things we need to do is get a positive outlook toward life. I don't know what you feel like is, would make your life worthwhile. I don't know what it would take for you to think that your life is worthwhile. Maybe some of you want a new job. Maybe some of you want a new house. Maybe some of you want a new spouse. Maybe some of you thought new kids would do it or a new job would do it. Some of, I know some of you thought, you know, if I just won the lottery, if I just won the lottery, you've probably said the same thing I'd say. Lord, the first thing I'd do is pay the church off. If you just, well, you got to play it to win it and I don't play it. So what would it take to make your life worthwhile? And if you're thinking any of those things, listen to me, if you're thinking any of those things, you're probably never going to get to the point of thinking that your life is worthwhile. It's called destination disease. If I could just, then I would be. No, no. It won't happen that way. You know why? Because if you're not happy now, you won't be happy then. If your life is not worthwhile now, it won't be worthwhile then. What we really need is a better picture of Jesus and who he is. And get a better positive outlook on the life that we live here and now. And that's the reason why I chose this morning, Philippians chapter 3, verses 12 through 14 in the New Testament. But before I read it to you, you and I need to realize that when Paul wrote these words, he was in prison. He was not in prison for doing something wrong. He was in prison for preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ. He was in prison in some terrible conditions, he was probably chained to a Roman guard. A lot of Bible theologians and commentaries, they, they say that Paul probably wrote two-thirds of what he wrote while he was in prison. So you need to get that mental picture in your mind that here's a guy trying to do good things for Christ. He's been arrested, he's in jail, he's in prison, and he's writing to us. He's writing some words to us. And here's what he said, Philippians Chapter 3, verse 12 through 14. Not, not that I have already obtained all of this or have already been made perfect, but I press on to take hold of that which, for which Christ Jesus took hold of me. Brothers, I do not consider myself yet to have taken hold of it, but one thing I do, forget what is behind. Man, I wish we could do that. Forget what's behind. Oh, you don't understand what I did. You don't understand what I said. You don't know what they did to me. Forget what's behind. Ain't nothing you can do about it anyway. You know, there's three things. I, I read this yesterday. I'm reading a book, The Courage to Be Healed, um, by Dr. Mark, and I can't remember his last name right now. What is it? Rutland. Rutland. Mark Rutland. Thank you, Ryan. I, I, got, I hired him for a reason, for him to remember things that I forget. <laughs> and, and in the book, it says that a lot of us, uh, well, all of us are born 
wanting three things. We want to hear three things. I love you. I forgive you. And supper's ready. (laughs) That was really the third one. I love you. I forgive you. Forgetting what's behind. Are you listening? Forgetting what's behind and straining toward what is ahead. Can I, can I just put my own little commentary in right there? You cannot do those both. You, you cannot reach for what's back there while straining towards what's up here. You can't do it. That was the problem with the children of Israel, and that's why they wandered in the desert for 40 years, because they liked the onions back in Egypt. But yet they wanted the promised land. Okay, the Old Testament calls them leeks. I think that's an onion, okay? It's the same thing. So they say, Moses, we're up against the Red Sea. You just brought us out here to die because there wasn't enough burial places in Egypt to bury us. They just kept looking back, kept looking back. Kept. Paul says you can't do that. If you're going to have a positive outlook on your life, you need to strain toward what's ahead, not what's behind. Yesterday is gone. There's nothing you can do about it. You need to strain towards what's ahead. He said, I press on toward the goal to win the prize for which God has called me heavenward in Christ Jesus. And so you got to stop right there and ask yourself this question. What is it that Paul's trying to grab hold of? Well, you got to slide your finger down to verse 10. And here's what Paul's trying to get a hold of. I want to know Christ. I want to know Christ and I want to know the power of his resurrection the fellowship and sharing of his sufferings. Boy, we don't want that. Pastor, are you telling me to pray for suffering? No, I just want you to handle it better. I just want you to handle it better. What's the goal? Heaven. What's the goal? Eternal life with Jesus. What distracts us? Sufferings. Things that happen to us down here. And instead of our vision being vertical, we have this horizontal plane that we keep looking at. And Paul says, you can't do it. I want to become like him in his death. And so somehow attain to the resurrection from the dead. What's he reaching for? What's his goal? Simple. His goal is the resurrection from the dead. Paul says, I've lived this life. At one time, I was a church persecutor. I fell off my horse at Damascus. I became a church planter. I've written now almost two-thirds of the New Testament because my goal is I want to reach eternity with Jesus. That was his goal. You know what our goal is? New job, more money, better car, big house. And when that becomes the goal, it's not such a positive outlook on our life because we Don't always attain it. Paul says you can't look at it that way. And here's the point. Here's why I'm even taking my time to say this. If our goal is heaven, and if our goal is eternal life with Jesus, then all these little setbacks in life are just stepping stones to get us closer to be with Jesus. But instead, we look at all the little stepping stones as problems. Things that are going to make me stay home. Now, those of you who are watching on Facebook, I love the fact that you are watching, but I really wish you were here. But somehow, someway, we get distracted by all the things that rise up against us. If you'll remember, when when Jesus came walking on the water because his disciples were in a boat in the middle of the lake and they thought they were going to die because the tempest was strong, and here comes Jesus walking on the water... What was he doing? Walking on the very thing that they thought was going to kill him. Sometimes those little things in our life are just stepping stones for Jesus to help us to get through it so that we can reach out to attain the goal, which is to live with him forever. And if we had that mindset, then Romans 8, 28 becomes real to us. And that is all things work together for good for those who love the Lord and are called according to his purpose. Now, I looked up in the original language, in the Greek, the word all. And it means? It doesn't mean the good things. It doesn't mean the things that make us feel good. It's all things. All things work together for good. You may not see it, but it's not about us seeing it. The problem is, is that we try to see it when we're looking like this. We'll see it when we look like this. 
Because when I look up, I see God and I know he's got my best interest at heart because regardless of what you think, he's a good God. He wants good things for us. And sometimes what doesn't look so good really is good, but we just don't see it right. And when we face that adversity, when we face those problems, instead of us just believing God to get us through it, what happens is we allow those things to become clouds of doubt. Now, don't raise your hand because some of you are probably sitting next to him. But do you know that believer in Jesus Christ that does not live a life that's more abundant, but yet they walk under the cloud of doubt, seems like all the time. All the time. <laughs> I saw a few people like, <laughs> why? Why? And the longer that we spend in that time of doubt, the longer it takes for us to close the gap to get close to him. We need to trust in the Lord. Oh, my goodness. We need to trust in the Lord with all of our heart and not lean into our own understanding. Well, the way I understand this, it don't look good. (laughs) Well, don't lean in your own understanding. In all of your ways, acknowledge him. Then he'll make your path straight. Well, you don't understand, Pastor, what I'm going through. I don't have to understand it. I want to. I try to. But I don't have to. God knows. He has not forgotten you. He does, he's not, it's not like he doesn't know where you're at. We go through upheavals in our life. We go up through upheavals in our family, upheavals at, at work. And suddenly we think the world is falling apart when in reality God's trying to do something. And sometimes he cannot do it. I'll move on. I know this is just the first point. I got three. The other two are going to be short. But sometimes he can't do it because we're so comfortable where we're at and what we're doing. You know the story of the the eagle. The mama eagle makes that nest so comfortable for those little eaglets. She puts rabbit fur in there and leaves and mud. But then it gets to a point where mama eagle's like, I am tired of these eaglets. They need to get out. You know what she does? She starts removing all the things that make them comfortable. And it finally gets to the point where the little eagle's like, ooh, ooh, and jumps out. That's what God has to do with us sometimes. He just has to make us uncomfortable. But the problem with us is that we don't see it that way. We think God's forgot where we're at, that God doesn't know what's going on in our life. So then we just walk under that cloud of doubt. And when we walk under the cloud of doubt, we just bring pain into our lives. And here's the challenge before I tell you what the second step is. The world's view, and and I don't, I hope this doesn't hurt anybody's feelings. But the world's view is not the same as the church's view. You cannot keep your hand in one while holding on to the other. You cannot do it. You you are either going to follow him and reach and strain toward the prize of eternal life with Christ, or you're not. Jesus has to be first place or he's no place. Well, Lord, I'll give you 80% of me, but it's this other 20%. I just can't give it up. And for some of you, it's 10%, if you know what I mean. (laughs) The world says that you can make your life worth something and you can feel good about yourself by climbing the ladder of success. Just climb the ladder of success by making a lot of money, by having influential friends. That somehow you can make something out of your life and you can feel good about yourself if you receive a lot of rewards. That if you belonged in the right circle. And here's the problem. These are things that make you feel good about yourself, but these are not things that make you feel good about God. These are not things that help you look upward. And the Bible says, instead of looking at all those things, how about you just feel good about yourself because God loves you? That's pretty simple. And here's the cool part. That don't change. God loves you as much right now as he ever has or ever will, and it never changes, no matter what you do. And some of us have tried, haven't we? We've tried to make God not like us, but he loves you. He thinks you're a wonderful creation. If he had a wallet, your picture would be in it. He loves you. And we've got to get that picture of him in our minds. But the problem is, is that we struggle through this life trying to answer those three questions. Where did I come from? Why am I here? And where am I going? 
And without a picture of Jesus and without straining towards him as the prize, we lose sight of the answer of those three questions. Matter of fact, Frank Peretti, Christian author, he wrote this. He said, it's no wonder that our young people today have poor self images. When they go to school and they read books that tell them that they're products of blind chance, that they're just accidents of nature, unplanned, unloved, and unwanted. Look at me. Nobody is unplanned. Nobody is unloved. Nobody is unwanted by God. He loves us. He had a plan for us. He wants us to spend eternity, but we get distracted. And normally we get distracted by those things that are here on earth. And Paul's saying, listen, just quit doing that. Why don't you start stretching toward the prize of Christ Jesus? Why don't you start stretching that way and forgetting what's behind? Here's the second thing. And I'm going to try to hurry through this one, but whew, I don't know. We, we need a positive attitude towards our own life. But we need a positive attitude, a better attitude towards the church. Not just Tri-State Worship Center. The church, the global body of Christ. The church that was birthed in Acts chapter 2, that was supposed to be the hands and feet of Jesus. They're supposed to be the voice of God here on the earth. That's who we're supposed to be, but I'm afraid that in too many circles, we've just turned it into a nice social club. Where I can go and drop a few dollars in the box and everything is okay. And I'm here to tell you that we need to develop a positive attitude toward the church. And I'm not saying that in some self-serving way. I'm not saying that, that uh, you know, things will go better for me. I'm not saying that so the church grows and somehow I'm going to make more money. Matter of fact, let me just say something to you. If that's your view of your pastor, I would leave. I wouldn't stay here. If your pastor would just after that, I wouldn't sit under that. I'm not telling you, please stay. I mean, come back next week. Don't. But if that's your thought about it, if, if that's how you feel, then I don't know why I would sit underneath that. And here, here's the thing. The church is here to reach out to a lost and dying world. We have services on Sundays and Wednesdays just to encourage people and disciple people and pump people up. But the service doesn't begin until we leave here. The service begins once we walk out the door. I, I was uh, private messaging with someone that I noticed uh, Nikki had responded to on Facebook this week. And they live in North Dakota. I didn't think anybody lived in North Dakota. I thought that was just like a big backyard up there. You know, that nobody really lived there, but that's where they live now because their husband is in the military and they're, they're, they're up there. And, and, and the kind, I don't remember exactly how she worded it, but she's like, I believe in God, but I just lost faith in the church. That's pretty much what she said. I didn't, I didn't want to get involved in all the public conversations. So I sent her a private message and I was like, okay, tell me what happened. Just where did you get hurt? What happened? And, and you know, there were churches that, that just were not being churches. We, we think the church is supposed to be our four, no more. And if you don't look like us and act like us, talk like us, smell like us, and you can't be part of us. But that's not who we are. And we really need to start looking at the church through a positive light with a better attitude about the church as being a soul-saving station, a place for broken people. A church without broken people is a broken church. And, and somehow, someway, we need to understand that while there's people criticizing the church and the church has done enough, to deserve that, we, we deserve some of that criticism. Well, I don't go to church because the people are judgmental. Yes, they are. Some of them are. Well, I don't go to church because the church is full of hypocrites. We got room for one more. Come on down. Well, I don't go to church because all they want is my money. Well, all Walmart wants is your money. You keep going there. I see you in your PJs. We, we brought a lot of that on ourselves Because somehow, someway, we thought that being part of the church meant that we were like on a higher plane than what everybody else was, and we're not. So some of the criticism is justified. But here's what I told the person that I was having the conversation with on Facebook. On the day of judgment, 
which this person said they believe in God. So yes, you believe in the judgment because if you believe in God, there's going to be a judgment. And on the day of judgment, I'm not going to stand before God for what you do. I mean, if that was the case, I, I'm going to like save up some money so I can pay somebody to stand in my place because I, I you know, it's like, Hey, what about so-and-so? I knew them. Can I get in? Because what about my mom? My mom was a praying woman. Can I slide in on her coattails? No, I'm going to stand before God for what I did. And you know what? Whenever you get a group of people together, there's going to be some of that going on. There's going to be some judgment going on, some hypocrisy going on. Yes, but you don't leave the job because there's hypocrites there. And don't say they're not. You know they are. You, you don't leave the job because of people judging you. You don't quit school because of those things. But for some reason, it's okay to quit church because of that. No, I'm going to stand before God and he's going to pass judgment on me based on what I did while I was here. And in 2022, I want to make a greater impact in the kingdom. And for me to do that, I simply need to make a change for the better. And the things I need to do to make a change for the better is to have a better outlook on my own life. But also I need to have a positive attitude towards the church because the church is what's going to reach out into a lost and dying world and help us to be able to make a bigger kingdom. John chapter 12, there's a story about a woman with an alabaster jar. We don't really know who she is. I know that some people have attached the name Mary Magdalene to her, but, but Jesus never really calls her by name. But what she does is she interrupts a meal that's going on because she has a very expensive bottle of perfume. And she breaks that bottle and she pours it on Jesus. And you know who complained and criticized uh, her for doing it? The followers of Jesus, the disciples, Judas Iscariot. And some of the others said, oh, we could have sold that and we could have done some cool stuff for the needy. And Jesus says this in John 12, 7, you leave her alone. Leave her alone. She has kept this for the day of my burial, this, this anointing, this perfume, this expensive thing that you thought we could have sold and helped other people, which hindsight being 2020, that probably was not Judas's real thought. And Jesus said, leave her alone. If that's what she wants to do, you leave her alone. As a matter of fact, it goes on to say in, in, in Mark 14, 9, that Jesus said, surely I say to you that wherever this gospel is preached in the whole world, what this woman has done will be told as a memorial to her. People say, you go to church, you're just wasting your time. You give to the church 10%, 15, 20%, 1%. People say, you're just wasting your money. And what we need to make a bigger impact in 2022 is a bunch of believers in Jesus Christ to forget what's behind, begin to press towards the prize, which is Christ Jesus, and understand that he works through the church, the community of faith, not these four walls. These four walls are, are, are not the church. You're the church. I'm the church. And we need to have a better attitude toward that so that the church can reach out and make a difference in the lives of people who need it. Now listen, when we risk something for God, there's a good chance you could lose it. I get that. But in, not in the long run. In the long run, the war's been won. Somebody once said, I read the back of the book and we win. So what happens before the end of the book are things that God's going to use to get us where we need to get to. And so you and I need to understand and begin to trust in the Lord with all of our heart and quit criticizing the church, begin to understand that God uses the church to reach out and touch people who are hurting, who are lost. But then we have some believers to say, well, you know what? I just want to play it safe. I just want to play it safe. Don't get comfortable. Don't get comfortable because that's when God's going to start taking things out of the nest to make you uncomfortable so he can get you where he wants you to go. Point number three, develop a positive outlook on life. Have a better attitude toward the church. But here's the last thing I would say to us this morning, and I think it's a strong, strong point, and that is we need to develop and display a positive attitude toward other people. Part of that judgmental thing and that hypocritical thing that people have, we brought on ourselves because we didn't have a good outlook on other people. Somehow we began to judge them that they deserved whatever they were getting. 
Somehow we began to live a way that the Bible didn't. The Bible says that they'll know we're his disciples because of our love for each other. Not for how we can judge each other. Robert Schuler, who was a pastor in California several years ago. Some of you may remember him. Here's what he said. It would amaze us how many people that we could influence for Christ if we would just treat people nicely. Just be nice. Man, that's, that is something that's missing in our world, isn't it? We don't know how to be nice. It's a hard world. It's a world that doesn't know how to exercise courtesy. It's a, it's a world that has lost the meaning of respect. It's a dog-eat-dog -dog world. If you don't believe me, just get stopped at the stoplight before the 17th Street Bridge. All those wannabe NASCAR drivers. Hello? One of them, Todd Brown. I saw, no, I, I, I'm sorry. Did I say the name out loud? I didn't mean to. You know what I love doing? Most of the time when I'm going across the river, I go to Chesapeake and go across because I'm going downtown Huntington. And so I like getting in that left-hand lane because that guy in the right-hand lane thinks I want to race him to the bridge. And sometimes I do. <laughs> but then I just keep on going, you know. <laughs> and I can just hear that guy, ooh, you know, I can just hear that in my mind. But it's a dog. Eat. Everybody wants to be first. Nobody wants to be last. Nobody wants to serve. Yet the kingdom principles are all the exact opposite of the world principles. If you want to be first, you have to be. If you want to be at the, a leader, you got to learn to serve. And if you want to live, you got to die. The exact opposite of what the world tells us. The world tells us all the opposite of all, all three of those things. But somehow, someway, we've got to start seeing each other different. We can't keep jockeying for positions. The church must be a place where people can come and be accepted and be loved and be encouraged and be built up. And to be honest with you, that's one of the things I really love about Tri-State Worship Center. Prior to us getting real fancy with the text in church thing, I used to send out a little card to first time guests. That little card had three questions on it. What'd you notice first? What'd you like the most? What'd you like the least? And without fail, 99% of the responses were like the one on the screen. Everyone was so warm and friendly in your church. We really felt at home there. And you know what? I think if a church is going to make a difference, that's, that's the way it needs to be. Now listen, you can love people straight to hell. You got to tell them the truth, but you need to tell them the truth in love. You need to tell them the truth in a loving way. I, I, I mean, you could probably bring to me some stories out of the New Testament, but I couldn't find them where, where Jesus was being ugly with unbelievers. <laughs> he just entered into conversations with them. You know what happened when he attracted the big crowds? I, I got to quit. Linda, if you'll come, it'll help me land the plane. When, when Jesus attracted big crowds, watch, watch, watch. When he attracted big crowds, he always said things to make people leave. Always. He always said things to make people leave. Because he wanted the people that really were serious about having a life change there. And then he would just minister to them. It's not our place to look down our nose and cluck our tongue at people. Because they don't look like us. As a church, we need to see people differently. We need to see people that every pair of eyes, listen, I, I'm, I'm going I'm to say this, we'll almost pray. That, I, got, I got one more scripture I really need to get out of me. Every pair of eyes that we come in contact with is no child of God. Some of them are being held hostage by the enemy. Some of them are in bondage. I get that. But they're children of God. All of them are. So that's how we should treat them all, like children of God. People need people. People need people that are part of the community of faith. People need people that are part of the community of faith that see themselves in a light that is a positive light that we're going to make a difference. We're going to make a change for the better. And that's the simple resolution that I have for you. 
very simply, Lord, help me make a change for the better. And I do that by having a positive outlook on myself, a positive outlook on the church, and a positive outlook on other people. But those things will require something. Change. Change. That's so hard for us. Man, we're so comfortable. Heard this story. You probably heard it before too. It was about a captain that was guiding a ship. Dark, pitch black night. And the captain suddenly notices a bright light directly in front of him. And he knew that his ship was on a collision course with the light. So he rushes to the radio and he sends an urgent message demanding that the vessel change its course 10 degrees to the east. A few seconds later, he receives a message in return. The message says, cannot do it. Change your course 10 degrees to the west. Captain got angry. He sends another message. It says, I'm a Navy captain. I demand that you change course. He receives a message back a few seconds later. It says, I'm a seaman, second class. I cannot do it. Change your course. Well, by this time, the captain's furious. He sends one final message. I'm a battleship, and I'm not changing my course. A few seconds later, he gets a message back. It says, I'm a lighthouse. It's your choice. He said, Pastor White, listen. Some of us need to get rid of the battleship mentality. I ain't changing. I don't care who says what. That pastor ain't telling me what to do. And there's just a little lighthouse says, probably need a change. Probably not going to end well. And that's what we need to do. A couple years ago, there was a Christian pastor. I'll leave him unnamed. But he wrote a book, said you can live your best life now. Here's what he said, enlarge your vision, develop a healthy self-image, discover the power of your thoughts and words, let go of the past, find strength in adversity, live to give and choose to be happy. Choose to be happy. Here's what, it, here was the quote that kind of was the main theme of the book. We have to conceive it on the inside before we can receive it on the outside. So may I suggest to us this morning that this resolution filters down into every segment of our life. Lord, I want to change for the better. And for me to change, I have to get rid of my stinking thinking. I need a checkup from the neck up before I wreck up because it's a lighthouse, dummy. <laughs> the Fred Sanford thing. I'm sorry for those of you that are too young to remember Fred. Listen, but here's, here's, here's my final verse and, and we're going to pray. Your life, my life will never change, will never change until we change the way we think, which leads me to, I have to say, probably my favorite passage in the Bible, Romans chapter 12, the first two verses. I'm going to read it to you out of the New Living Translation. Here's what it says. And so, dear brothers and sisters, I plead with you to give your bodies to God because of all that he has done for you. Let them be a living and holy sacrifice, the kind that he will find acceptable. This is truly the way to worship him. And then, and then verse two, do not copy the behavior and customs of this world, but let God transform you into a new person by changing the way you think. Changing the way you think. And then you're gonna learn and know God's will for you, which is good and pleasing and perfect. You gotta change the way you think. Now, if we would have written that, some of us probably would have said something different. Don't copy the behavior and the customs of this world, but let God transform you by giving more money at church, by praying more, by reading your Bible more. We, we would have had all those things. But you know what he said? You're not going to do any of that stuff anyway until you change this right here. Because it's belief plus believer that determines my behavior. Amen? Stand with me. Lord, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you for your word. Help us, Lord God, to adopt that mentality that Paul had, that even in the most adverse of conditions, we can forget what's behind and press on towards the goal, eternal life, life with you. 
And that while things here on this earth can jump up to try to distract us, as long as our eyes are fixed on you, and the goal is to spend eternity with you, then we understand those things here on this earth, they really don't amount to that much. We just need to keep on keeping on. And we do that by having a positive outlook on our life, a positive outlook on the church, positive outlook on others. So help us today, this moment, right now, decide that we're going to change for the better. Thank you for that. I ask it in Christ's name. Keep your heads bowed for just a moment. If you're here this morning and you're not in a right relationship with Jesus Christ, you need to change the way you think, friend. You, you think it's going to be okay, but I'm telling you, it's not. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believes, and we learned last week from Ryan that that means to live in, to live like Jesus, whoever believes in him will not perish but have eternal life. We, we have to accept him. We have to confess with our mouth, believe in our heart that Christ is Lord, that God raised him from the dead. The Bible says we can be saved. And I challenge you this morning, if you're not in a right relationship with him, that you would forget what's behind and press toward the goal of knowing him intimately, knowing him intimately. So we're going to sing this chorus through just a couple of times. And as we sing, if that's you this morning, I'd love to pray with you. But the choice is yours. If you're not in the right relationship, would you come? at me for just a moment. I really appreciate you being here this morning. I love pastoring this church. You're just awesome people. Even those of you, you that this is your first time here, I love you already. But if we're going to make a difference in 2022, we can't just keep doing what we've been doing. A man that was much wiser than I said, if you always do what you've always done, you'll always get what you've always gotten. And if you always do what you've always done, expecting something different, that's the definition of insanity. I just keep doing what I've been doing, thinking that somehow, someway, that's going to bring a different result. That's insanity. You know what we need to do? Have a positive outlook on our life, a positive outlook on the church, and a positive outlook towards others. When we do that and we change our mind and we forget what's behind and we reach towards what's ahead, and that's the prize, eternity with Jesus, that's what he's looking for. And we can make a difference in 2022 if we do that. No men's meeting tonight, uh, but the regular activities of the week have uh, fired back up. So whatever you're involved in this week, uh, come back to it, please. If you're not involved in anything, man, there's a lot. Celebrate recovery on Monday night. It's not just for drug addicts and alcoholics. It's for hurts, hangups, and habits. We all got them. Somebody called or message this week wanting to know if it dealt with food. And we absolutely it does. Hurts, hangups, and habits. Um, and then Wednesday night church, we have classes for all ages. Thursday night, Royal Rangers, and Glow Girls, and Ladies Bible Study. I mean, it's just a, a, a plethora of things that happen here. God bless you. Happy New Year. I love you. We'll see you the next time.